Hello, everyone. Stacy Portugal here. And today I am sharing with you the top 10 reasons the scale isn't moving. Now, I got to tell you, this is a subject that is near and dear to my own heart. I know the feeling of having to keep starting over and not really experiencing success and not really building your confidence that you can do this. Um, I know in my past, and I've encountered many clients who have tried tons of programs, but, you know, they just, they don't feel like these programs really work for them. The scale doesn't budge all that much. They feel like they're doing all this stuff. And maybe these other programs are written for, you know, someone else's body, someone else's lifestyle, um, someone else's taste, but not really written for the way that you like to lose weight. So you're, the scale just might get stuck, even though you feel like you're doing everything right. Or maybe you're just tired of going it alone. And I'm hoping that this video can help move you forward in some way. Also, I want to let you know that um, I have one spot left as of the re as of the date of recording of this video for my private coaching. It is my VIP program. It is help and support and guidance wherever, whenever you need it. And I personally know how valuable it is to work with a coach. You know, recently I was having a digestive issue and I kept reaching out to my doctor and reaching out to my doctor. And you know what? He has his own business model of operating. He's not working at my disposal. And I ended up hiring a gut coach. Yeah, there actually is such a thing out there, a gut coach. Sarah, who I adore, and if you need her name, just let me know. But the point is, is that Sarah's job is specifically to work with me. And so she's there whenever, wherever I need her. And she's been like holding my hand through this whole digestive issue. And I'm telling you, I've gotten so much relief from working with her. And it's not that my doctor couldn't do the job. There's just a lot more red tape. It's a lot more convenient when you have a coach by your side. So I do want to let you know I have a $500 coupon, but it does expire on August 27th. So if you're interested in private coaching, I do ask that you reach out to me so we can talk about it and just make sure it's a good fit. Private coaching is like a side-by-side -side partnership. And we want to both make sure it's a good fit. So if you reach out to me, don't worry. I'm going to reserve your spot. You're good to go. All right, let's dive into the top 10 reasons that the scale isn't moving. We know how frustrating this is. Maybe one of these will resonate with you and help you get the scale moving for yourself. All right, reason number one, you're an all or nothing thinker. Look, guys, weight loss is a mindset, and you really need to be in the right mindset, not just with your plan, but also with, you know, day-to-day -day challenges. So the facts are is we don't live in the black and white. There is no black and white in real life, right? There's very few things. We all live in the gray zone, and that's where your thinking needs to be flexible. The fact is we will never remove our humanity. And what I mean by all this is let's say you have a bad day or, you know, uh, you know, you, you went way off plan and now you wake up the next day and you're so mad at yourself and, you know, you're just angry and, and uh, I, or, or like you got into the cookies and then you're like, well, I had two Oreos. I might as well just give up and eat the whole sleeve, right? It's like you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater and you don't have the mental flexibility 
to deal with the challenges that come your way. It's inevitable, especially if you have more than maybe five, 10 pounds to lose, you're going to encounter some detours. So my suggestion, if this is you, is to stay aware of that judger versus learning mindset. Try to stay in the learning zone. And every time you feel yourself, you know, judging yourself or having a lot of negative self-talk or engaging in that black and white thinking, gently shift your mindset. Think about what can I learn from this? How can I strategize this so that it's easier for me to get back on track in the future? Or it's easier for me to not let, you know, a small slip up turn into a major um, avalanche. And one way also um, that I would suggest, you know, paying attention to your thinking is to get in the habit of hearing the chatter in your brain. So constantly pause, listen to what's going through your mind, wake up in the morning and kind of check in with your mindset or check in with your mindset several times during the day. Another really common strategy to sort of help you think in a more helpful way is learning how to reframe. So sometimes our thoughts you know, are from these, you know, uh, very negative lenses. And you really want to make sure that you're looking at things a little bit more objectively. You're looking at these from a solution focused mindset, as opposed to a problem uh, mindset. All right, reason number two, you're eating too many calories in the form of energy. So if you've been with me for a little while, you might be familiar with the PE ratio that I've introduced. And that consists of protein divided into the amount of energy. And this is all in grams. So it's the grams of protein divided by net carbs in grams plus fat grams. The energy portion, the bottom part of that division, you know, equation or whatever you want to call it, is your energy. So if you're eating too many carbs, if you're eating too much fat, it might be too much energy for your personal body and it may get in the way of weight loss. Now, the PE ratio is super, super helpful and it can be used to make individual buying decisions when you're buying like a packaged product you can look on the nutrition label and very easily figure out the PE ratio. I'll give you a quick example because I'm going to try to make this video, you know, relatively short. But here's an example. If you bought something that has 20 grams of protein and you see the net carbs, which is carbs minus fiber, is equal to five and the fat is equal to five. And I think I said the protein was 10. So 10 divided by 10, which is five plus five, equals one. If your PE ratio of that product you're buying or your diet overall is one or greater, that's a great PE ratio. And the PE ratio also can, can help us manage our expectations. If you're tracking, I can take a look at that PE ratio and guide you in that way. The most important thing to keep in mind about reason number two is to start looking at labels more carefully at the point of purchase. Don't bring stuff home that has a super low PE ratio. If you bring something home that has maybe a 0.8 as opposed to a one or greater, that's okay. You can probably work with it and add in some protein to increase the PE ratio. But the bottom line is don't buy it if the PE is super low. It just might be just a ton of junk food. Now, I know PE seems a little confusing, but um, for those of you who work with me, this is something that we talk about in coaching. I don't really have you do the thinking. I kind of do the thinking for you. But it's always good to know, you know, I really believe in education. So I hope that's helpful. All right. Reason number three. 
you lack consistency. I say this all the time, guys. Consistency is key. And if you're not consistent, what could be happening is you could have your feet on both sides of the line. Here's what I mean by that. You're not staying in your lane. Your feet are on both sides of the line. You're in two lanes. So let's say you're in the low carb lane. But every single day, while you start a healthy low carb day, maybe by the end of the day, you're being inconsistent and you're cheating and you're doing this like every single day. So your low carb day turns into a high carb day. And then you know what? You lack consistency. And even though you're beginning your day with the best of intentions, you're really not following the plan. Now, I know that life gets in the way sometimes and it's hard to be perfect and it's hard to be consistent all the time. Hey, once again, we're never gonna take the humanity out of you know, ourselves, but planning ahead and problem solving can really help with your ability to stay consistent. Also, expecting more of yourself and not allowing yourself to get off track for every little thing will be helpful, really be helpful too. One last thing on this note is focus your focus on your plan seven days a week. I don't care if it's the weekend. I don't care if it's your birthday. I don't care if it's your mother's birthday. Focus on your plan seven days a week until you hit a milestone. Then once you hit a milestone, it, that'll that's an indication that you're in a good place and that, yeah, if you want to have a cheat meal and just plan it out ahead, that's totally fine. But you want to remain consistent really for a period of time um, until you hit a milestone, which is a really good reason to do something like a 30 day challenge. All right. Reason number four, there are too many processed foods in your diet. Here's the thing, you guys, as we age, and I mean starting as young as 35, 40 years old, we can become insulin resistant. Maybe not to the point where we have like red flag glucose readings, but maybe it's to the point where you're, it's a very subtle, you know, resistance that your body is starting to not notice and not respond to insulin the way that it should. And so this can be caused by age, it can be caused by a poor diet. Also, again, with processed foods, they, they typically have a low PE ratio. So if you've got a ton of processed foods in your diet, chances are your energy intake doesn't match your energy needs and your PE ratio is too low. Or maybe you're on a like a ketogenic diet, but you're consuming way too many low carb keto type products and you're having trouble getting low enough uh, in terms of carbs to really make a difference for you. Here's my advice, guys. Stick to whole foods, become a smarter consumer, make whole foods convenient. What do I mean by that? We turn to processed foods because they're so convenient, also because they're hyper palatable, but we'll talk about that another day. So we have to make sure that whatever we're choosing to eat, that it is whole foods primarily, and that it's convenient. So that's where planning and prepping can really help. Also, if you're kind of jonesing for these processed foods and you haven't gotten over the hump, here's a bonus tip. Don't be afraid of fat. Fat is filling, it's delicious, and it's satiating. Okay, reason number five. Your current diet is stimulating your cravings. Now, this kind of relates to number four, which is having too many processed foods in your diet. But here's the thing, commonly, even cookie cutter type diet programs who prioritize appealing to the masses, they want you to have it all. And so they're kind of encouraging you to buy processed foods, or maybe that's just 
part of like the weight loss plan. It's a processed food plan. The problem is it's a catch 22. You might be eating a low enough calorie range on this cookie cutter diet plan to lose weight, but maybe your body isn't responding because it's the current diet you're on is actually stimulating your cravings, which is very typical if you have too many processed foods in your diet. But if you don't have a lot of processed foods in your diet, another reason that you may be stimulating, that you may be inadvertently stimulating your own cravings is because you're doing chronic cardio or some sort of chronic exercise. So here's what I mean by that. You are, you think you have to work harder at exercise in order to lose weight. And I am here to tell you that is unequivocally false. You don't have to work harder. You have to start working smarter. So another thing I would suggest is cut the carbs, the grains, the sugars, the artificial sweeteners. If, you, if the scale isn't moving because you, you keep craving these, you know, highly processed foods or whatever, sweets or carby foods, then you need to cut those things and make fat your friend. Pay attention to your PE. That'll be a good indication if you're consuming too much energy. And honestly, rethink any diet plan that makes money on selling you food products. I know that's a really big thing for me to say because, hey, I'm just the little boutique practice, you know, your, your local nutritionist here. But the truth is a lot of these programs, they don't make their money on the coaching. They don't make their money on your success. They make their money on selling you food. And those foods are highly processed foods. Reason number six, you're spending your money on useless products. And these products are making false or deceiving claims that may just highlight one small health benefit of that food, but it's really not your big picture answer. This practice dilutes your efforts in focusing on the more basic skills of weight loss. Weight loss, guys, is not complicated, and we don't want to overthink it. The misleading marketing can really take you away from all these basic things that we know help you lose weight. And it, once again, this marketing does not provide the whole picture or the solution. So my suggestion for you is to get educated. Have a credible team whose information is trustworthy. I hope I'm one of them, and that's why you're watching this video. Build a team of people you trust, just like my gut coach. If I'm run some, if I'm talking to my doctor about something, I got news for you. I'm gonna run it by her first. She's she is on my gut team along with my doctor. And one other thing is just to get back to the basics. Don't rely. It's not one product that's going to get you to goal. It's going to be your consistency, all the, the skills that you build about, you know, losing weight and maybe you're tracking and you're watching portion sizes. There's a whole bunch of skills that I teach my clients. I help them master it, especially in my group, in my uh, private coaching. All right, reason number seven, you are making too many food decisions. Here's the thing. You gotta save your energy for more important decisions. Every food decision that you make throughout the day is a fork in the road. Let me say that again. Every food decision that you make during the day is a fork in the road. It's a fork in the road. One side is the riskier side. The other side is an on-plan decision. You don't want to be making any decisions, folks. You got to automate your menu. You got to know what you're eating every day. You, you've done the math, so to speak. You don't literally have to do math, of course. But, you know, you, you know that this all this stuff is on plan. You've prepped it. You've planned it. 
you're not making a decision. You start your day knowing exactly what you're going to eat and exactly when you're going to eat it. You know, this is really interesting because I heard this once. I heard this about um, one of the past presidents who does not, in his closet, is all of his suits, they're all blue, all the white shirts and all the ties and his little like, you know, presidential like American flag. He literally gets up and gets into that uniform every single day. He makes no decision about what he's wearing. Why? Because he's saving his decision making energy for more important decisions that regard this country. And so my point is, you don't want to keep making all these decisions throughout the day. You need a food routine. You create one simple routine that will have a big impact and you work on it until you've nailed it. And you build upon this routine over time and you tweak as you go or you create a new one. You don't want to have the, the world is not your oyster, nor should it be when you are deciding what you're going to eat for lunch, right? It's too overwhelming. So make less food decisions. All right. Reason number eight, you're not being realistic about your food intake. Now, this I talked a little bit on Facebook Live about. Here's the thing. If you're not weighing, measuring, tracking, if you're not writing it down at all, but just kind of going loosey-goosey off of memory, if you're guessing about restaurant portions, ingredients, it's in the scale of stock, you need to be realistic about what you're actually eating. And if you're not tracking, the first thing I'm going to suggest is you begin by tracking so we have an idea of where you're starting. And that involves weighing and measuring. Now, do you have to weigh and measure your entire life to maintain a healthy weight? Of course not. But these are all great basic skills to build because what you're doing is you're educating yourself about what the portions look like, et cetera. Plus, when you track, you start to notice your behavior as well as your total intake. Do as much shortcut tracking as possible. This is something I work with my clients on. And eat real food so that you stabilize your appetite. Now, when it comes to restaurants, my suggestion is if restaurants are a part of your lifestyle, make sure that you're eating in a place that will accommodate your special request. You're going to want a grilled, you know, everything should be prepared really simply, especially at the beginning, or especially if that scale is not moving. Okay, reason number nine, you lack accountability. You know, you may have been going it alone for far too long and you don't really have much to show for it. I don't know about you, but, you know, this whole like um, digestive issue, I've been struggling with this well before I was in the weight loss industry. And I would say I was about 40 when it all started. And um, I was going it alone for so, so, so long. And then I had a flare up a couple months ago. And I swore to myself, this would be the last time. And to be struggling with something for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years is a really long time. So if you've been going it, you know, alone for a really long time and you don't have much to show for it, it might be time to get a diet plan out of your head and start working with someone. Or maybe your lack of accountability means that you just, you're not following the science, right? I try to encourage, I, I know what was really helpful for me in my weight loss journey, and that was to let go of the drama. It was to start relying on science, science and this is really the way that I work with my clients. Finding a partner, a coach, checking in often, staying engaged, getting real about what's working and what's not working with that learning mindset can make all the difference. All right, last reason, guys. Reason number 10, you lack the support and guidance of a practitioner. Yeah, you knew I was going to throw that in there, folks, because 
having someone that you can trust and rely on is essential, in my opinion. If you are struggling and you haven't had the ability to, you know, feel what success feels like to build your confidence that, yeah, I really can achieve this goal. Or maybe, you know, if you just tried a gazillion programs, save your money, stop spending money on that stuff. Do the one thing that can move you forward. And that is going to actually get a coach Um, because you don't want to be doing all the things and then not getting results. You know, interview a coach, make sure it's the right fit. It should be convenient. It should be private. It should be professional. So with that said, I do want to remind you one last time that I have only one space left. And right now I've got no appointments on the books for this last space and that last coupon. So if this is you or you think it's you, there's never an obligation to buy And you may determine that private coaching is not for you, but if you think it could be for you and you just want to discover more about it, I want to encourage you just hit reply if you've received this email or reach out to me via DM on social media or any way that feels good to you. Stacy at stacyportugal.com works well too. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope that this was helpful for you. And of course, I hope to see you in coaching real soon.